to the video on solving exponential and logarithmic equations. Hopefully, if you've watched the previous videos and done all the practice in class, like my A and C period has done this year, you already know how to solve these equations. So this might be a review, or just go a little bit more in depth on how to solve them. To begin, I'm going to solve an exponential equation. And what makes this an exponential equation is that we have a variable in the exponent. I'm going to perform all of the, um, I should say, inverse order operations just as I would in a normal equation to solve for this exponent. So first, I would add 5 to both sides. Next, I would divide by 3. And here's where our new step comes into play. So how do you solve for this exponent here? Right here. Notice that we already know the answer in a, in a way. We know that 2 squared, if this had been a 2, would get us 4. So we really know that 2x plus 3 must be representing that 2, which we could write down right now. But I actually want to go through the steps of how we would get that in case we didn't recognize that which it might happen. Right now, this is in exponential form. I am going to change to its logarithmic form. That would be log base 2 of 4 equals 2x plus 3. Now I would find what is log base 2 of 4. I can do that one without a calculator. But if I didn't, I obviously could evaluate it there. So I'd get 2 equals 2x plus 3. Now we can solve for x. It's a linear equation. I get negative 1 equals 2x. So x would be, let's see, if I divide by 2 on both sides, negative 1 half. You could check it and make sure it works, but I don't foresee any issues with that. So an exponential equation is pretty simple. The new step would be switching from exponential form to log form. Now I'm going to do the same problem using a different way of thinking. So for my second method, I'm going to start the exact same way. I would add 5 to both sides, divide by 3. And I'm doing this to try and isolate the exponential portion. All right, so there's the exponential portion, just like we did in the other method. Now, instead of going from exponential form to log form, I'm actually going to use log as a verb. I'm going to log both sides of the equation. So if I take the log of the left side, it should equal the log of the right side. Now we can use our log properties, such as bringing this exponent down in front to be this a value here. Oh, don't forget put, to put parentheses around that, because now it's 2x plus 3, all of that, times 2 log, sorry, log 2, and that will get us log 4. So I just said we had a multiplication problem right here. So I'm going to divide by log 2 on both sides. And that will get me 2x plus 3 equals, and if you didn't know what this was and you had a calculator, right, you could just type that in as log 4, divide by log 2, oh, and you get 2. And now you can see we're back to the same place we were in the last question, where you're going to wind up with your x's negative 1 half. Either way is fine, whatever you prefer. So those are exponential equations. Let's try a log equation next. So here's our first log equation. What's important about this is that you actually see the difference of two logs. Whenever you um, are solving for x in a log equation, you want to make sure that you combine into a single log if possible. So that's going to be my first step. So before I actually combine these, remember I'm going to have to move this 2 up here to be the exponent on the x. And just a warning, as soon as that happened, right there, we have changed 
the, I guess you could call it the degree of the equation. And we actually have opened up room for extraneous solutions. All right, think about that. We went from having a linear term in there to having a quadratic term, just so we're aware. Next, I can combine my logs into log base 3 of x squared over 12. And that still equals 2. This step, notice we're in log form. This next step, I'm going to go into exponential form. Because remember that log and exponential equations are the inverses of each other. So that gets me 3 squared equals x squared over 12. Okay, that means I have 9 equals x squared over 12. Multiply both sides by 12. We get 108 equals x squared. So x equals plus and minus the square root of 108. Now notice we had one, oh, sorry, two solutions. And if you checked them, so if I do a quick check right here, we'd have an issue. You always want to do your check in the original equation. Now the original equation was 2 log base 3 of x. I'm going to show you here. I'm going to skip doing the positive version. I'm going to show you what happens when you have a negative right there. Minus log base 3 of 12 equals 2. Remember that this value, the base of the log, as well as the number that you're actually taking the log of, neither of these can be negative. We cannot perform this operation. We can't take the log base 3 of a negative number. That means this is no good. Okay, So our only solution, and you can check it and make sure it works, but I'll tell you right now, is only the positive square root of 108. Let's take another look at a question like that. Now notice here we have an ln equation. That's simply a log equation with base e. So feel free to put a little e right here to remind yourself of the base. Okay, so like I said, when you're solving log equations, you want to have everything combined into a single log. Luckily, that's been done for us already. So I'm in log form. It's time to go to exponential form. So I'm going to say this is e to the fourth equals 3x plus 5 squared. And also remember that e is a number, not a variable. Right? So we're going to be solving for x. So how do I solve for x right now? Well, the first thing I'd want to do is get rid of this square over here on the right side. So I'm going to square root everything. That would leave me with e squared equals 3x plus 5. Now to get x by itself, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. So I have e squared minus 5 equals 3x. And now divide by 3 on both sides. So my final answer for x is e squared minus 5 over 3. Hmm. Hope you see that I forgot something here. When you square root something, you get both the positive and negative of that answer. So where did I take the square root? Let's see, if I go back to here, this is where I took the square root of e to the fourth, and I got e squared. This is where I should also say, oops, I got this, but I also get negative e squared equals 3x plus 5. So now let's solve for x. I get negative e squared minus 5 equals 3x, and then divide by 3. There is my second answer. Okay. And now think about it this way. Are these answers positive or negative? Um, let's see, e squared is positive. And if you're not sure what it is, you can obviously type that into your calculator. 
Might as well just type it in my calculator anyway. So e squared minus 5 is about 2.389, and then divided by 3, I'm getting approximately 0.796. So if I were to check that in the original equation, 3 times 0.796 plus 5, and square that, I don't, I don't see an issue, right? We can take log of that positive number. Let's check this one out. So this time we're doing negative e squared. Remember that negative is not in the parentheses being squared. Minus 5, and then divide by 3. Gets me negative 4 point, let's see, 1, 3. All right, so in here, let's check back in the original. So I have 3 times negative 4.13. That's definitely negative, about negative 12. Plus 5 is about negative 7. Ah, but it's getting squared, so it doesn't matter. So we should have known that both of these would have been fine. And it was because of this square up here, right? It doesn't matter whatever it was in here. The square is going to make it positive. I am going to point out that this question would have been very different if I had done this first. Let me, let me show you. What if I had changed the question to 2 ln of 3x plus 5 equals 4? Now, if you went through the steps, you might have divided by 2 here. and then just got e squared equals 3x plus 5. And then you would never have square rooted, you never would have gotten two solutions. So very important, let's get rid of this. I'll make a little note. Okay. Do not move the exponent Um, down to be coefficients when solving. Okay, and because that's the issue it causes. Now, if you look at this in the other direction, if you had started out with a constant and moved it up to be an exponent, that's where you get your extraneous solutions from, like we did in the last problem. So just be cognizant of all those things and you should be fine.